Good evening. Welcome to the Selectman's meeting for August 26th, 2014. Could I get a roll call, please? Carolyn Smart, present. Colin McNabb, present. I'd like to announce that this meeting is being tape recorded. Chairman's additions or deletions. 2.1, request to continue without testimony. Uh, is that a deletion? Well, it's not really deletion. Oh, it's um, the continuation of the... It's the a continuation okay. of the poll petition, and I can explain... When we get to that? ...now or when we get to it. Yeah. Okay. And then add 3.10, something from Mr. Kukula. Yeah, it's a contract... Okay. ...signature. Alrighty. Approval, approval of meeting minutes. Did you have any... Yeah, I actually went through, like we talked the last time, I got three of the meetings done. I think Karen did the rest of them, so that's fine. The only thing I did have to say is I noticed we're putting on there that the attachments can be seen online, and, that, and that's fine, but for permanent record's sake, they should still be attached to the minutes um, and sent downstairs because, you know, we might not have our website forever. Um, but other than that, I can make a motion to approve them all. Do you want to do them all at the same time? Sure. Except for the executive session? Right. Okay. I would move to approve the meeting minutes for May 20th, 2014, June 3rd, 2014, June 17th, 2014, June 25th, 2014, July 1st, 2014, July 7th, 2014, July 15th, 2014, and July 31st, 2014. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Chair, I would move to approve the executive session minutes for June 17, 2014 and July 1, 2014. Second. Motion's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 2.1. Continuation of public hearing on petition of Unitil and Verizon to install two utility poles on Butel Road beginning at pole number one and continuing approximately 345 feet northerly. Um, and this is something that we're going to be continue the hearing, Andy? Yes, I met out uh, on the site today with Jim D. from <clears throat> Unitil. Um, and I know, Colin, from talking to you that you had been out there um, and had seen uh, you know, how, how tree-lined that, that way is. Mm -hmm. um, so they don't have a clear shot now to get from the existing poles to the... Uh, to the west property, um, so they need to work out an arrangement with uh, probably a, a lease or rather an easement with the west and um, work out the proper route on the road. So they've asked for a month continuation so that they can work with the two parties. Do we have a date to continue it to? Yeah, to the 23rd. Okay. Did you have a 23rd chance to of September? Look at it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I would make a motion that we continue the public hearing till I'm sorry, what was that date again? September 23rd. Till September 23rd at 7:05. Second. Been motion motion's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 2.2. Uh, Council on Aging Director Ed Snap, Chairman of the Screening Committee, will be present to discuss the recruitment of a COA director. Welcome. Thank you. Um, we're actually in pretty good shape. I feel pretty good about what's been going on. We've been doing due diligence here. As you can see, we've got <coughs> part of the board here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe we can, we can do this because we have found some funding that's already in place, in existence. And uh, that would be the formula grant. And we can use that money based on what we've gotten from um, uh, yeah. Emmett, from the state. It's yeah, from yeah. the uh, Office of Elder Affairs. Okay. Um, Claire Devine and um, you hold this spot, the uh, volunteer coordinator. And she is, you know, left. So that frees that up. This is only this 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 money that can be available will take us through the physical year, physical year, uh, 2015, here, mm -hmm. and um, that will put the amount that can be given to the for uh, wages for uh, the director's spot up in the ballpark of the one person that we 
uh, want to be here, which is um, um, Kimberly D. All right, and it puts us right, right there in the ballpark. If we take some of this funding that's there and move it in and let her work on um, having that position uh, dispersed between two other individuals or redelegate that. So that makes this available. This is only a band-aid though, because it's not, it is not a guarantee, although we have been getting this grant uh, almost, what, how many years? A couple of years. Many. So it's been, it's been, it's there. So we found some funding. How much are you, what's the salary when with the well, if the current the the budgeted amount and and this yeah it brings it right up to around 45 45 okay now Kimberly D I'm not exactly sure what she's making she is at present on a holiday for a week both Dave Prophet and um, Andy Sheehan have been talking to her. And she still wants the position, but the idea was to bring this this level up to her ballpark, you know, put it in the ballpark for her. But you haven't had a chance to speak to her personally, no. Or is any? Is, I mean, is well, I would I would just I would just add to that that I my last conversation with her before she went on holiday was that she would um, when she returned she would get back to me. I told her what uh, we were looking to do. Um, she's familiar with the formula grant and, and how that all works and then the, and the ability to be able to move some of that money into salaries. However, and she realizes that that's just a band-aid that's, that's, and it's something that's gonna have to be worked out in the coming fiscal year to um, take a close look at that, that salary range and the budget and, and re-examine that whole situation. But however, um, so she was actually going to give us an answer when she returned. Okay. So, so it's still a little uncertainty whether or not she's, you know, going to be agreeable to these terms or not. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but we can suggest that, and then she can work out any other further negotiations with Andy, and move forward from there if it if it were to go in that direction. So, but that, but based on uh, my conversations with the Office of Elder Affairs, and maybe to be able to utilize a, a portion of money that had been earmarked for something else, but based on what Ed and I have uh, looked at, and the uh, the rest of the, the committee here with relative to. Um, how um, it would affect the organization as a whole by eliminating this particular uh, volunteer coordinator's position for a period of this fiscal year. Um, I think with, with a little bit of delegation, we might be able to make it work. And it would also increase the hours from 35 to 40 hours a week. Okay. So, so that this would bring the, um, that, was, that was the other component of this, was to get that to 40 hours a week at the $45,000 range. And to enable, you know, um, I just got the stare right from Andy, but the uh, but that was the uh, <laughs> but that was the idea. Was so that those extra five hours would you know enable the position to be able to deal with some of those other um, duties that were going to be neglected. Oh, go ahead. So the grant money has already been applied for and received, and we have it in the account, or is this something you need to apply and receive? Well, we, we, Chris had just applied for the grant prior to uh, her leaving. So it's just in process. And it's in process, so it actually worked out. Perfectly. Uh, I, when I talked to him at Schmarzo on Friday, he said that um, you know he was, was more than happy to work with us um, and uh, be accommodated in any way he could. So he sent me back the forms to fill out. I just have to work out a few details with him, Ed and I, and, and uh, Valerie will work on that, and we'll see uh, where it takes us. You know, in the next couple of weeks, and I'll you know sit down with Andy on it too because there's a couple other budget questions I have for Andy when uh, we get to that point. Well, that was one of my questions. Have you talked to Kim to see if that can be appropriated for salaries for the director? Well, it's not up to Kim. It's up to the Office of Elder Affairs, and they've they've agreed that that could happen. Mm -hmm. So you know the money would get would come to the town, but however it would be up to them. Um, they dictate where that money can be spent. So. Okay. So supplemental hours. Right yeah. now, people have really come together. Okay, uh -huh. both, both uh, Linda Salisbury, all the volunteers that, that are there, um, and Donna Fenton. Mm -hmm. So everybody's chipping in and really doing it. They're, 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 it's, it's working, it but it's still, it's them. still, yeah. it has become a little, you know, stressful. Mm -hmm. I mean, for, for those. 
and I had to make a few promises that I've gotten some insurance that it would work, mm -hmm. that, that it, it'll happen, and also um, uh, hopefully we had this issue come up, but hopefully we can get <clears throat> at the files we need to continue the the. Um, your computer the situation hasn't been straightened out yet. It was. It's. It's in the process, as I understand it. Will it be straightened out by tomorrow, Andy? I hope so. Yep. That's well, what I expect. What's, what's the issue? Um, Melissa has taken some time off this week, so she hasn't been uh, available to get over there. But she'll be uh, around tomorrow. <clears throat> Andy, the question I have is, if this say, you know, you've gotten this grant for many years, correct? Correct. And say, just we didn't get it one year. Do we have the flexibility in the budget to fully fund that position? I'm not talking about this year. I'm talking about in the future. Um, yeah, and I and I think there's a couple of ways to look at this. I think having the grant available is is a good fallback. Um, and and depending on how things unfold in the next couple of months before town fall town meeting, we may want to look at going to town meeting with a supplemental budget appropriation so that we have the foundation this year, you know, so that we're at 100 percent of the of the salary for this year and then for next year we're just whatever the, you know, whatever the increase is. Uh, otherwise we're, um, you know, it's still a little bit, a little bit tenuous. Um, I happen to think town meeting will go along with it um, because they've been, they've been supportive in the past of, of uh, Similar changes that have been supportive of, the supportive of uh, social services in the past, like the senior center. Um, so I, I think that they'll go along with it. But you're right; there is always that uncertainty of whether the grant will remain. So, um, but we would have for this year. We would have flexibility because of some savings that we realized in some other uh, spending articles. But we'd need a town meeting article to okay. move money. Um, I would just suggest that, that that's actually a very good suggestion. And you wouldn't get no argument from us if we were to bring it to the town floor in October or whenever our town meeting is set. Yeah. Um, but we'd also suggest that the grant should not be used to fund this position at all in the, in the future. This is just a, a mechanism right. against yeah, the That's, that's because, kind of where I was going with that yeah, as well. They, you know, we you know we took, when we discussed at the last meeting, we're like, well, okay, we don't we don't want to we don't want to make the job contingent on a potential increase in at town meeting. So this just gets us over that hurdle uh, between now and then. But if we can deal with it in a, at the uh, fall town meeting, that mm -hmm. would be that would be great. That's what I would want to do. I'd want an additional appropriation at the fall. We have another salary count that's going to be short as well. Mm -hmm. But you do have that grant money to offer the position. And then let her get in and take a look at the budgets and figure out exactly how she right. wants to operate the senior center, and we can incorporate those ideas. And she could put in, a, she could put it in for physical sixteen, you know. Right, because we brought it, we brought it to the attention of the Office of Elder Affairs that if this could happen, that there were a funding mechanism at the uh, fall town meeting, mm -hmm. that um, they're they're very mm -hmm. flexible. So even in midstream, we could go in and change that grant around, and that could be, and that money could be used back to what it was originally used for. This so. gives Miss D the security of knowing that we're committed to exactly. funding that position and getting the hours. So and then once she's in place, think about it. She's working on on the next year's budget. So mm -hmm. exactly, and she might you know want to move some money around within the budget. Who you know mm -hmm. who knows? It'll be a process. So right now we're just waiting to hear once she's back from vacation. So I, I guess what I would ask is table it for this week. You know, and then we can come back. Yeah. I think she's coming back next week. Is she? I think, I think she is. Think it's, yeah, Monday. Monday. Next it's Monday I'm next week. Sure it's Monday. Yeah. The meeting is uh, scheduled for the 9th. The 9th. Okay, we'll table it till the 9th then. Yep. Just one other thing, if I could, Colin. Yep. Uh, in the memo that I, that I included in the board's packet this week, um, in addition to the salary, I mentioned other benefits that um, may have to be uh, a consideration, um, not just for this position, but for similar positions going forward. Um, <clears throat> right now, the way that our personnel rules are structured, um, you basically start, you could come in here with 20 or 30 years of experience, um, but you have, you come in at uh, no benefits, essentially. Um, 
that becomes a challenge in the recruitment end of things. So um, if there is, if the board has some flexibility in terms of, uh, especially vacation um, leave, I think that would be helpful in in this case and in the, in other cases as well. Um, certainly, Miss D is going to be um, giving up some accrued vacation at her current employer, uh, and so that's um, that's always a uh, often a sticking point. So um, I don't necessarily need a, a commitment of anything specific tonight, but um, if there is flexibility on the part of the board in that regard, I'd, uh, it would be helpful in, uh, in negotiating with her. Well, just where I'm coming from on that issue, I, I read the memo and I agree that you do need some flexibility with benefits for department heads, but the rules have to be the same for department heads and employees, and I don't like making exceptions for one or another. I think that gets you into trouble. The other, the other thing that I was thinking about is personal contracts, because that's how a lot of a department heads receive an additional benefit package versus your your mainstream employees. And in the law, usually you're authorized to make one with the police chief or the town administrator. What we did with the building commissioner and with the highway superintendent, because that wasn't authorized by law, is we had town meeting vote to approve to allow, in this case it would be maybe the Council on Aging, in conjunction with the Board of Selectmen, a personal contract for, for the COA director. I would have no issue with that. Um, but I would have an issue with making different rules for different folks coming in because we have department heads like our town accountant and, and you know, they, they had to start at the beginning. So that's where I'm coming from on that. Not that I'm not open to either changing the personnel rules to reflect department heads versus employees or personal contracts. Well, let's... We're I, gonna know, take I just this. wanted yeah. to put it out there. That's my yeah. thoughts on so it. So we'll, we'll discuss it on the 9th and see where we stand and see how Ms. D feels about the about that salary. Okay. Sound good? That sounds that sounds a lot better. I mean, uh, and now we we seem to be pretty much on the same page. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's it's uh, I really didn't want to go back to the well and if we if I was going to go back to the well, then I was going to have the uh, listing changed and cleaned up so that it reflected the salary as it stands now, mm -hmm. which is not competitive no, I at all. I agree. You know, and, 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 uh, it's just unfortunate that it's kind of midway through the, you know, it's after the budgets are done, it's after we've already, so it's something that this is a good band-aid. Yeah, it's like a great idea to, to bridge the gap till yes next year. Right. I like the idea of, of presenting it, at least um, putting it up for the fall town meeting. But I still think that you're going to get the response that you want in the spring, because everybody's budgets are all going to go in, and mm -hmm. she would have time, <clears throat> excuse me, she would have time to be working on the budget and mm -hmm. putting it in. You know, I think that that's, I think those are positive, positive, and I feel good about that. Good. You know. I just wanted to express how grateful I am for, especially Mr. Snap over there every day and trying to figure things out. We're very, we're very fortunate to have folks it's like all just, of you no, working see, so hard. It, no, no. The thing is, we've got really good volunteers here, yes, and they're do. working. They're the ones that are working. Are. I'm just walking in here, eyes are going. You know, I got my coffee in my hand. I'm not doing. Um, you know, I'm just moral support, to be gone. honest with yeah. you. They're doing a great job. They have, they all are. Well, thank Other you. Other than that. Well, thank you very much for coming in. Okay. And we'll, we'll put this on the next agenda for an update, mm -hmm. and see where things are going. But yeah. you have my blessing on it. Thank and you. the support of going to town meeting in the fall. Good. 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 Awesome. This works for me. Uh, and you. Yes. 2.3. We are a little bit late, not much. Chief Boynton, come on down. Fire EMS Chief Mark Boynton to discuss on call pay. Mr. Chairman, um, I gave you a memo, but I'll give you a brief explanation and answer any questions you may have. We have 
essentially have a gap in coverage. Speaking of volunteers, with the, the past topics that you discussed, as you as you may know, our firefighters, uh, paid on call firefighters, are essentially a type of volunteer. They get paid, so they're not volunteers, but they get paid when they respond. So the gap that we have is nights and weekends and holidays in particular, when the full-time staff are not there, we really don't know who's going to show up. And the simple solution to that is to have somebody on duty or on call, not so in the scheduled the on calls. Right, scheduled on calls is probably an excellent description of that. Somebody that's expected to be in town and be available and respond, and with the knowledge and authority to make decisions. Uh, so typically, it's pretty customary in towns of this size to have a scheduled duty officer or, uh, as you said, somebody responsible to show up. So uh, I've discussed this several times with the officers of the department, the captains and lieutenants and the deputy chief. And uh, after a couple of events this summer where on the weekend we really didn't have many people show up for a call, and the ones that showed up were relatively new, uh, which makes me as a chief nervous, but made my fellow officers nervous, not knowing that if we had a major event, if anybody was going to show up that um, you know had the authority to make sound decisions, we agreed that we should transition to this on-call uh, or on-call shift, so to speak, for the officers, which essentially they take a week. You know, we're on a five-week rotation, so this week uh, Deputy John Elliott may be on-call. And for that week, what I need your permission to do is use existing funds within the budget to pay them essentially a $1 per hour standby fee. So it ended up being $100 per week. That had always been in existence. How long ago did we... We always had scheduled um, on-call time and they got a dollar an hour. Yeah, my understanding is not... I haven't seen any record of it. I asked when I became the, when I became the chief three months ago if this was something that we had tried, and the officers had told me it was something that they tried in the past. They were never paid for it, so they refused to vote. Um, we're always paid the dollar an hour back on the beepers. That's how we had ambulance coverage. The only yeah, issue... Maybe way back in the day of the ambulance. I think this is relatively well, maybe recently. Since like the, maybe the, since they merged, they did away with it. I think this that was could within the be. last couple of years, yeah. maybe seven or eight years ago they had done it. Yeah, maybe it was before they merged, because that's how we had always done it. The only, the only issue that I see, Chief, is your union firefighters, because mm -hmm. there's no authorization in the union contract to pay them the additional amount. Yeah. I, I absolutely agree that you should have a duty officer in charge, um, especially if you're not going to be available or, or mm -hmm. you know, so I, I absolutely support that. I've got no problems with and I'm not sure what the ground rules would be trying to negotiate that into the contract to cover any of your your full-timers that might take on that responsibility. I don't want to penalize them for not taking on responsibility, but I'm not sure if, if we have the authorization to do that. Well, we would have to negotiate it. You're right. Um, we would have to negotiate this into the contract. Um, it's not in their contract now, and, um, and it does raise some Fair Labor Standards issues. Um, there have been some cases where um, the on-call, or there's one notorious case, a well-known yeah. case, where the, the on-call pay had not been factored into the mm -hmm. overtime rate. Right? And we went through that, actually, in o yeah. o so, five, um, six, so we do have to be, be careful in that regard. If it's just the non-union folks, it's not an issue. Um, and if the, uh, if the union folks want to partake in that, uh, then we would have to negotiate that. Yeah, we went through, I'm sorry, go ahead. Do you imagine it will be mostly just the on call? There would be one union member. Okay. Which has agreed to the terms with me. Okay. Understandably, it needs to be negotiated, but is it acceptable of the terms and has already been on call? Carolyn? Yeah, just, just to go back to what Andy said, that's we went, we, we got into that situation years ago yep. where we weren't calculating in the on call pay into the overtime rate. So that's something you're going to have to review every six months to a year to be sure that we're, we are complying. That's up. You know, okay. um, but yeah, I, I I thought it was always still in place. I haven't been involved that much in the last few years. But yeah. you do want to have people on call. Yeah, absolutely. If it's already Andy, if it's already been an existing practice, it just hasn't been practiced in the last few years. Do we really do we need to vote on it if it's already? Yeah, we do. Um, in talking with Kim Fails, um, she needs some sort of an authorization from the board in order to 
in order to process payment for for individuals taking advantage of this. So, and so otherwise, it's just a, because it's a the practice was discontinued. Okay. Um, and it sounds like it might have been prior to the merger, so it might have been just on yeah, the I'm EMS not sure side. What they did on that. Um, so it's kind of a it's a it's potentially a slightly different animal. Um, so I think it's the cleanest thing is for the board to approve it for non-union, and then if uh, if the union wants to participate, then we would have to negotiate it into their contract as a an amendment to their contract. What they used to have, and what they used to, the fire department used to submit, or ambulance department used to submit to us, fire too, um, is calendars every month right. showing the on-call blocks that right. people have taken. And we do need to be careful about what you're outlining in a policy or in a description as to what they have to do to be on call. We don't want to restrict them too much or you run into Fair Labor Standards right. Act. Right. Um, and it's been a while since I looked at it. So I don't know if you still have an existing policy over there. I know <clears throat> you did at one time. I, I can look. I mean, I have some policies that have used in past. Yeah, so we definitely want to put a policy into yeah. place um, so that Kim has that for authorization. but. I mean, I have no issues aside of the, the union people. I think it's it uh, only makes sense that right. you know who's going to be showing up. Right. And understandably, just so we're clear, they get paid their hourly wage, wait, hourly wait, rate, yeah. <laughs> hourly rate. rate when they do respond. When they get response, so this yes. is the standby. If we do have a call, right. they get paid their hourly rate. And in some cases, maybe you mean they're, they're not going to work for a dollar? No, no. Yeah. And actually, they used to pay out every six months, so it'd be a little Christmas bonus and then a little summer vacation yeah, bonus as how. But you'd want to ask Kim how she wants it. She might want it to be monthly or. Yeah, we. Uh, my intent is to process it weekly. Process it weekly. That's fine too. So it makes everything clean, cleaner. But I know before they like that little clean, extra uh, check. Any F FSLA issues with? Yeah. With yeah. So if you could work on a policy. And, that would be great or use the existing it's been years since i've read it but um and colin if i could just jump in one <laughs> one slight uh addition to uh the response to your prior comment we didn't have the union in the past yes. so now that, now that we've got the union that sort of changes the uh the playing field a little bit so yeah absolutely so basically i'm going to make a motion to approve um payment of a uh, what would be a dollar and on call time for all non-union personnel and um, part of that is to get a policy together you know for us to review and approve if that's okay all right so i would move to approve the request of fire chief chief boyton to have on call pay at a dollar per hour for all non-union employees in the fire ems department second motion has been moved and seconded all those in favor aye, aye. thank you Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see Andrea. Oh, I'm sorry, Andrea. In in his letter, the chief said that. Um, that chief. He asked for the money. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the the money would come from his existing budget, but if you put it in place for the entire rest of the year, will you have enough money in your budget? Yeah, at a hundred dollars per hour for the nights and weekends, we're talking five thousand dollars for the year. Okay. Yeah, then it's for, for one person, one officer to be on call tonight, tomorrow night, through the weekend at a dollar an hour ends up being five thousand two hundred dollars. Great. Yep. Thank you. It's a dollar an hour in or a hundred a week. Yeah, well, it depends on how many people you have on call. Not a hundred dollars an hour. Uh, 3.3.1 review and approve staffing plan for treasurer collector's office <clears throat> Andy um, so after our uh, it was our meeting our last meeting um, we talked about uh, staffing down in the uh, treasurer collector's office we've talked about it a couple of times we talked about it back in June um, I think it was um, when we brought forth the appointment for the um, for the payroll clerk um, and we've talked about the um, all of the changes going on down in the in the treasurer collector's office and um, so I put together the uh, 
the staffing plan that's laid out on the uh, in the memo that's in front of you. Uh, Beth Ann Scheid and Kate Stacy are both here. Welcome. Um, Thank you. In case there are any uh, any questions, um, but as I've mentioned in the past, what we've come to realize and didn't fully appreciate in the past was that when Kathy Rosbeck was here, she was getting by um, really with with substandard staffing for the activity that goes on down in that down in that office um, and so we've tried to address that we've taken our time doing this we've been uh, we've been meeting about this on a pretty regular basis to try to figure out the best the best way to uh, to do this uh, and we think we've come up with a with a pretty fair proposal that is reflective of the staffing needs in the department and also um, fiscally responsible so what we're what we're recommending is a formal consolidation of the treasurer collector position right now uh, or when when Kathy was here she was the elected collector and appointed treasurer uh, for the last year or so we've been operating with separate part-time treasurer and collector there's a benefit in having a single combined position um, benefit for staff oversight and um, continuity in the department and um, and staffing at the um, throughout the day um, which is one of the uh, one of the benefits that that uh, we had when Kathy was here um, <clears throat> and I think it's a I think it's an important one that that we try to restore um, so a full-time treasurer collector and a, a um, and, and a position this is not a position that's classified in our comp and class plan so I would recommend that we send this out to HRS for an evaluation and uh, have them slotted into the into the position classification. Keep talking, Andy. I'm just going to turn it off. Okay. Um, and then uh, and that would uh, give us a uh, a baseline salary as well uh, for the position. The assistant treasurer collector which has been held for the last couple of years by Rebecca Hersey. We're not really proposing any, um, any changes to that. The arrangement, uh, the staffing plan that we have would, would allow Rebecca to step away from the collections desk and do some of the higher level uh, duties in the office, which we think are important for, uh, for getting us on track to where, we, uh, to where we need to be. And then there are two part-time or uh, lesser time positions a 30-hour position that at this point we're calling department assistant um, but we you know can sort of play around with with what you want to call it uh, that would be uh, a person that's at the collections desk uh, also doing payroll and and performing other similar tasks in the uh, in the department proposing that at, at this point at, at 30 hours if we stick with that title uh, that position exists on the uh, <clears throat> on the compensation and classification plan, and then the position of payroll clerk would be uh, would be eliminated, be rolled into that department assistant position, and then finally a collections clerk that uh, we're looking at as uh, approximately an 18-hour position, non-benefited position, uh, primarily would work at the counter taking in collections, posting collections, and performing. At the busy times. At the busy times, yep. correct. Yep. And, um, and so that person, you know, on, on payroll days, that the, uh, the collections clerk would be at the desk to free up the, the uh, department assistant to work on payroll and things like that. Um, but there are periods of the year where we would need both of them. There are periods of the year where, where we would need uh, either both of them or uh, one of them and the assistant treasurer collector at the desk just because of the volume coming in so, um, part and parcel with all of this we've talked a lot over the, the last couple of months about the um, about the, uh, the lockbox service that we've implemented and um, so that should help in the long term um, in terms of a transition Beth Ann has has offered to stay on and provide some uh, some transition and some oversight as we as we move forward. Um, stay on through uh, maybe through the winter. Depends depend on Kate's um, 
comfort level or uh, we're I should say I should be perfectly frank we're expecting that Kate would be the uh, would be the person that would take this position but obviously we would be we would be posting it so uh, but there would be a transition period and uh, Beth Ann has offered to to help us through that and then there would be some minor uh, changes to the office layout down there. Um, the, the counter that we have there now is not sufficient for really for more than one person. So we would do some some minor adjustments to that. Um, and would work with with all of the staff in the treasurer, collector, and assessor's office to make sure that, that inexpensive works changes. I'm assuming. Yeah, and it would be stuff that we could do we could do uh, in house with Mark and um, available staff. Andrea. In regard to the payroll, um, did anybody look into the cost of a payroll service? We have well, we have a payroll service now. We use Harper's payroll, um, but somebody has to process it on on our end and send it off to them. Data entry. So it is it is largely automated, um, but some of it some of it still falls on us. Okay. One of the things I'm glad you actually you brought that up. One of the things that um, that we would be looking at and it's something that we would have to talk to the employees about and particularly talk to the to the union groups about uh, is a uh, is going to a bi-weekly payroll some of them have already agreed to that some of the the union groups have agreed to that uh, but that would that would free up some time going from 52 weeks of pay to 26 weeks of pay uh, would free up some time for that for that clerical position to work on other stuff the only thing on the, the bi-weekly pay, which is, is uh, in most cases, I, you know, it's up to them. I, mean, I feel not one way or the other about it. But vacation, if they're going to go on vacation, could they get the pay off schedule? Well, that raises a different issue. Um, we've never adopted the statute that allows people to be paid in advance of their vacation. Okay. Um, we actually have that. I had that in my folder for, for this years. town meeting. That? What's that? We just did it that way for years. Well, I think it has been done occasionally. Um, but um, <coughs> we do have it as a uh, potential warrant article for this fall, fall town yeah. meeting. Independent of this, I hadn't actually thought about that, uh, that uh, wrinkle of, of uh, somebody being on vacation and how their, their vacation gets processed. So, um, but that's, um, that's one of the things that we need to talk about as well. Carol? Yeah, um, a couple of issues. One, I read the staffing plan, and by com when we passed the legislation, the, the article, what we did was that we just made the elected tax collector and appointed tax collector. We didn't combine the positions. Correct. So uh, I really believe that it kind of triggers Section uh, 5.1 um, of the town charter, because we're actually doing um, Kind of a merging of, of it down there and a, re, a reconsolidation, a reorganization of that. No, it's just a procedure, it's just a process, but um, that's something to keep out. Then the other issue that I had is with HRS sending it back out to them because I pulled the original email with the original paperwork and she did go through. Um, she did it separately and then she did it together. Um, so that, that has already been done. We should have that job description <coughs> somewhere. And the town treasurer tax collector, she had the minimum and the average in the proposed. Um, but and also in regards to HRS, I suppose that would go on to maybe the goals talk. But I really don't want to have a lifelong relationship with them. Um, we bought a program in which you have weighted scores and you can calculate to figure out where you put people on the different grades and it's a pretty simple process. We did it here for years. The personnel board did it with a very similar program through MMA. So not that that has anything to do with your staffing plan. But I got this Friday and um, being the general government rep, I was kind of surprised I wasn't brought in in the conversations. But I did get a chance to talk to Groton and Lunenburg. And so I'd like some more time to evaluate what the other communities um, do before deciding to completely, you know, redoing, redo the. Um, I expect I, I was thing. thinking that we should table this until Sue's here as That's well. That's the other part. Because I, you know, especially a change mm -hmm. like this, I'm just I'm, I personally am not comfortable sure. without the full board present. Yeah, and that makes sense. 
certainly I'd prefer to have the full board's uh, support behind this. Yeah, and if you want to check in, Andy, and see if we have to follow that process. That would yeah, be I looked at that, and I and I, I don't think that that's triggered here, um, because that, if I can find it. That really contemplates a um, something like going in the direction of, of a Department of Public Works or something like that. Um, if you're doing a, a broad reorganization of of the uh, of the structure, um, <clears throat> um. well, I mean, we're doing quite a few changes down there, and we're and we're combining two jobs that have always been separate. So. Um. Right, but there is a bylaw that says that the uh, the selectmen can appoint the the collector as the treasurer. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah. um, I think it's you know I think it's similar. Um, I'll look into it for like I said. I just got this Friday. And yeah, I mean it's I can. It's kind of hard to do all this research. And I can days. reach out to uh, town council if you'd like. Um, yeah, just a quick phone like call. See if he thinks it triggers it. All right. We all so done? I have no problem tabling this to okay. the next. Table it till the ninth. I, mean, I feel like we're going to be saying that a lot tonight. Alrighty. Yeah, um, I, I like the full board for some of these discussions. Mm -hmm. so Absolutely. Thank you. thank you guys. Thank you. Three, thank three, you, Beth Ann. Kate. Three point two. Review and approve Chapter ninety reimbursement request for Hamilton Hill Road in the amount of ten thousand two hundred twelve dollars and thirty two cents. This is a project that uh, was completed. Earlier, I forget if it was earlier this year or late last year, but um, has uh, all the work has been done. This is just to submit our uh, our uh, funding reimbursement request. Hamilton Hill, for if you don't know where it is, it's uh, last road on the left as you're heading west towards Ashby mm -hmm. off 119. Yeah, it's kind of it's almost you blink yeah. and you easy miss to go it. past. Yep. Okay, so I would move to approve the Chapter 90 reimbursement request for Hamilton Hill Road in the amount of $10,212.32. Second. Motion's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Do we want to table 3.3? Got Sue here, or do you want to do that? It's going to stay for such time. Uh, hang on one sec. Um, wait, did I send it to someone here too? Sorry. There we go. I mean, I suppose we could at least discuss it, maybe okay, not make fine. the make the decision. Yeah, what we're trying to do this year, um, and, and maybe it's maybe it's not as critical, um, but I was when I started to look at the uh, at the schedule for potential town meeting dates, I had the the Council on Aging position in mind and the and the budget um, supplemental budget appropriation in mind for that. And I thought it would be beneficial if we could move town meeting up. Uh, we've been doing it the last few years in mid-November, fifteenth, uh, nineteenth, in that range. Um, the first year that I was here, we did it in October, which. I personally like, um, and I think um, in some ways is, is easier on people's schedule, you're further away from the holidays. Um, the other thing, this year we've got two elections, so the clerk's office has two elections that they have to uh, have to be worried about, one on September 9th, and that's the primary, and the other one on November 4th, I believe it is, uh, which is the general mm -hmm. state election. Um, so we don't want to be too close to either of those dates. I did talk to Kathy Spofford, and she would be okay with um, with October 21, or anywhere in that in that week. Uh, the 21st is a is a scheduled selectmen's meeting night. Um, it's not a holiday week. It's the week after Columbus Day, um, and um, would work. I think would work pretty well. We expect that we'll have free cash. By that time, okay. uh, if the board is comfortable setting that as at least a soft date, yeah, I'd be happy yeah. to. I'd like to uh, open the warrant and get people thinking right. about what they yeah. need. Yeah, you know, it's you think, oh, it's it's only August, but um, yeah. you know, it's really only four Early weeks or better. so away. So, um, I'd like to at least give people uh, 
some some notice that we can get some uh, the more get time, articles in. The more time we know um, have war potential warrant articles, the better we can be prepared. Yeah. So, I would move to set the. Do you want me to set the date or tentatively set the date? Why don't we say tentative? I would move to tentatively set the date for the fall special town meeting to October 21st <coughs> and open the warrant. Second. For submission of warrant articles. Sorry. Yeah. Motion's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Alrighty. 3.4, update on FY15 capital borrowing. Um, just a, um, not much to talk about here. Just wanted to let you know that I'm um, going to let the departments know that they can go ahead and um, commence ordering the equipment that's on the capital plan. We've gotten the go-ahead from uh, from our bond council on the on the capital borrowing, uh, they have recommended that we um, that we go ahead and we purchase the equipment with available funds, and then use the bond proceeds to uh, to reimburse. So, um, no action needed by the board. Just trying to uh, keep you in the loop on this. Okay. I have a question on that, Andy. Um, I know we had spoke about it before. So we're gonna. The plan was to buy all the capital items. With available funds and then we know how much we need to borrow because we don't necessarily need Correct. to borrow the 729. Yep. From what I understand now we're just borrowing the whole 729 regardless of the amount needed? No, we'll um, we'll borrow only what's needed. You're gonna so. borrow because that's that was one of my concerns. I didn't understand that. Right. Um, yeah we'll um, we'll use available funds to purchase the equipment. Um, we already know that the um, by purchasing the combination sweeper catch basin unit that will save us I think it's 20 grand mm -hmm. um, we're still waiting for some clarity on the state budget we had an earmark in and the I budget noticed it was vetoed the first time around. and yeah and I was fine I was trying to find it this week and I haven't been able to get um, get hold of um, anybody who can give me a definitive answer on it um, so if we get that then that that's 50 grand that that comes off what we would have to borrow too so yeah, I think it was it was at 75 because I actually looked up the bill appropriation and the first time around they vetoed it on July 15th so I didn't know if if it's gone back through for the second um, but there was a few that's what I'm, yeah that's what I'm trying to find out in the list of vetoes I didn't see it listed so on the, on the well, list kind of the Department of Public Safety that bill yeah. and they just wiped out all the towns um, yeah. so I wasn't sure if that was that was it or if it was going back back around right so we'll look for some clarity on that but um, but that could affect the uh, yep, the yep. amount but we'll end up borrowing only what we need okay good that makes me feel better so um, 3.5 and 3.6 I think we should table until um, Sue is the here full board, yeah. there is one thing I did want to share that so that you'll have it Okay. Um, one of my goals is uh, to discuss retiree health care. Yeah, I saw that on that um, And I found, oh, here it is. I found online Ashburnham um, recently did this. Mm -hmm. um, they did, uh, there's a article and related documentation that you can have for the. Yep, I, this has been around for a long time. We actually did a study on this, right, Andy? I don't know if Colin, you ever received that. He, yeah, I did receive okay. it. Here, Karen, if you It was like part it. of the union negotiations, yeah. wasn't it? Uh, it came out of that. It came out of the final contracts that Greg Barnes negotiated before he left, mm -hmm. uh, that we would do a study of the, uh, the financial impact of retiree health insurance uh, on the town. Um, so we did that in, um, I was looking at it this week, uh, it was 2011 that we did that. So I can, I'll redistribute that. Yeah, if you well, could send, it's been a long time since this, I read it. On your goal, is this something you want to work on towards fall or the spring? Or? My intention is for the fall. Um, well, that only gives us a couple of months. Right. So that's why it's a shame that Sue can't be here tonight so that we can discuss it. Yeah, because I'd like um, the finance committee on board for this discussion. Oh, right. oh too. absolutely. Um, but I did, you know, looking at this, this was a citizen's petition. Um, I would prefer that it come through the Board of Selectmen. Um, and then we, you know, I know it's a tight timetable, but let's see if we can, you know, this has been kind of discussed for a long time. Mm -hmm. And we either, I think it's time for the, for town meeting to decide. Oh, I got no issues with that. So. That's the way it's supposed to be. Alrighty. Let's see, skipping down, 
All right, two. so we'll postpone this to, yeah. I would move to table 3.5 and 3.6 to what's the date of our next meeting? 9-9. Nine, nine. September 9th. Okay, so moving along. Uh, what are we at? 3.7, review and approve auction permit for an auction to be held September 13, 2014 from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. This is just as a little bit of background. The auction statute is a little, uh, it's a little messy. Yes, it is. And um, it would, it, it appears that the board doesn't have to take any action on this. Um, it appears that the auction permit is the purview of the police chief. Um, however, I think, and does it do any harm? It doesn't do any harm. Um, you know, it's one of those better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So, if the board is comfortable approving the auction, um, Kathy Spofford has also uh, weighed in and uh, she'll be actually issuing the, uh, I think she's actually issuing the paperwork, right? Mm -hmm. um, but uh, if the board's comfortable with it, I, I don't think it does any harm to include your um, your vo vote on this as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the handbook said we had to, but the, but the master no law is kind of yeah, Convoluted. it's really, it uh, it's, it's odd. I've got no issue, better safe than sorry. Yeah. I would move to approve the auction permit for an auction to be held on September 13, 2014 from 9 to 4 p.m. Do you need the auctioneer's name in the motion? Um, yeah, I suppose so, Petrowski Auctioneers. Petrowski Auctioneers Incorporated. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 3.8, review mandatory referral notice from the planning board related to proposed amendments to the zoning bylaw. This was an awful lot of work. I was thrilled to see that they're working on the wind energy systems. Like I said, I got it Friday. I had so much going on this weekend. I didn't get to review it so uh, really in depth. So I would move to send no comment at this time. And then if we have any issues, we could go to the public hearing. Did you have anything of concern? I looked at it. I didn't see anything. Um, didn't if you want to put it off, it, the hearing's not until the 22nd of September. Okay. So we could carry this over to the next meeting if you want to have more time to look at it. Well, if you reviewed it and you didn't see any issue without, some of it's just cleanup and definition stuff, but the, the wind, um, I'm assuming that the, the um, wind zoning bylaw is kind of a template that most communities yes. are using? Yeah, I think, uh, if I recall correctly, MRPC helped them with that. Yeah, so I, I don't have any issue. Um, if, if you want to wait to see if Sue has any comments, that's fine with me, too. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so I would move to table it to... 9-9. Nine, nine. September 9th meeting. Second. Oh, wait, table. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> no motion, really. No motion. All right, 3.9. Announced 25th anniversary celebration of Atwood Acres 66 Dudley Road on September 5th, 2014 from 11.30 to 3 p.m. I can't believe it's been 25 years already. Did I give you the... Uh... No, I didn't see it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, let's see. Atwood Acres is celebrating 25 years and they're sending an invitation out to to all towns and folks here to join the celebration of providing safe and affordable senior disabled housing and service to the community. Scheduled for Friday, September 5th, 2014 from 11.30 in the morning to 3 o'clock in the afternoon um, over at 66 Dudley Road. Okay. Are you going? Well, we have a retirement party that night too. So That's I'll it. It's during the day. Oh, yeah, I'll try and skip over after. I'm going to run. I'm going to go over at some point. You gonna go over, Andy? Um, yes, I think so. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, it'll be a rocking time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It is nice. Twenty-five years. Yeah, I can't believe it. Yeah, they're all excited about it. Good. Good. Three point one zero. Review and approve contracts from uh, with approved contracts with Beta Group Inc. for preparation of a pavement management sit plan. In the amount of twenty-four thousand five hundred, and catch basin mapping in the amount of five thousand four hundred ninety dollars, with all costs paid from Chapter Ninety. We um, we approved this Chapter Ninety request back in the spring. Uh -huh. um, the original approval was thirty thousand in Chapter Ninety. Um, Ed went out and got some some quotes. Went with Beta Group, who's done some work. I think Beta did uh, Lunenburg's pavement management plan. 
Um, they came back in at 24.5. Is that what I wrote? 24.5. Um, and then Karen Chapman reached out to Ed and said, you know, it would be really great while they're doing that if they could if they could get all our catch basins mm -hmm. and drainage outfalls and other things for the